G'day, it's Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series, and today we're going to be busting a little bit of a myth. When you're out in the bush, the forest, or a remote area, the most important thing is having your own bearings. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, you need to have a rough idea of where you are in the grand scheme of things. Are you heading east? Are you heading west, north, or south? Now, one of the most important things is obviously taking some form of navigational equipment with you. But if you don't have that, then how do you do it? Well, I'm going to show you a little trick today that I'm a bit skeptical about. So it's going to be interesting to see if it works. But make sure when you ever go out to an area that you're unsure of, that you always take at least three forms of navigational equipment. Otherwise, you might end up like this car here. So what am I talking about today? Well, when you're going out in the bush, the forest, the desert, whatever area it may be, it's always critical to know your bearings, as I mentioned earlier. But how do you find them? Well, many people will say, well, you should always have a compass app on your smartphone. And look, I've used them, I've actually used them for geological purposes too, and they are quite accurate. But what happens if you forget your phone? What happens if you forget your GPS? And what happens if you even forget your compass and your map? How are you going to find your bearings? Now, this might seem all a little bit stupid. It might seem a little bit too outlandish even. But the fact is, it would have happened to more than one person out there because it's happened to me. I was actually working in a remote area and I thought I knew the track quite well. And well, to be honest, I did. But what I didn't take into account was the fact that there was a change in weather conditions. Now, this meant that a heck of a lot of rain had been dumped on an arid area. So there was a lot more growth. The other thing was that there was a lot of movement in the water too, and actually washed the track away. So, about three quarters of the track I was quite familiar with, but when it came to that last quarter, I had no idea. And what I ended up doing was taking a wrong turn. Now, I was pretty confident on the turn to begin with, but the track became more and more overgrown, and I couldn't see any signs of traffic. So I couldn't see whether there'd been a car up there, a motorbike, or anything in a long time. And I started getting concerned and the bushland that I was actually going through or the vegetation was getting thicker and thicker and thicker. Now if you're in a desert or if you're in a area that is quite sparsely vegetated it's not too bad. It's still very difficult but it's not too bad because you've got great access to being able to see the sun. When you're in very densely wooded areas it's much much harder. It's almost as if you're trying to navigate blind. So this is where having a couple different forms of navigation and taking them with you makes a big difference. But what I'm talking about is hindsight. So what did I do? I actually got to a clearing and I actually saw where the sun was. So I know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And if you're unsure of which way east and west is, remember the little saying, never eat soggy wheat bix. Um, works for us here in Australia. You might have a different one in other parts of the world, but it works pretty good here. So I know the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. So I've got a rough idea where east west is. But where's north south? Now, most people would be able to say right off the bat, where north is, where south is, but it can be a little bit harder, particularly if your orientations have been muddled up a bit. Today we're going to set out to make a compass, and we're going to use the trusted Land Rover Series 2 to make the compass here today. One thing before we get into it, it is really important that you come up with a little survival kit for yourself. This is mine here, and sadly the shortbread's actually gone out of the tin quite a while ago but it's just a handy little tin it's not much it's not much so I've got 
box of matches, waterproof matches, tin of sardines which might help me for a bit and I've got this here and this is actually flint and magnesium. Now if the wood's too wet where I am in that part of the world I can actually cut this with my knife and file off filings and actually use that to generate enough heat to actually burn the sticks or the kindling around me. And then here is a very battered box. I actually got this when I was 10 and I still use it today. And this is a compass and it's fantastic. And I'll go into that a little bit more later on. But it's important to make up your own kit. You know, you'll find out what works for you and what doesn't in no time at all. The more mistakes you make, the more you learn. Right, so the first things first in making a compass is we need a magnet. Now, nothing in this car is magnetic. So how do we do that? Well, what I've done, the wreck that you saw in the intro to this video, is I've actually gone and pulled some wire off it. I think this actually went to the interior light. It's not overly heavily gauged, the wire itself, but this will do. I found the seat next to it, and I've actually cut off a piece of steel. It's pretty rusted, but it'll do the trick. The one thing that you'll find out here, particularly in Australia, no matter how remote you are, is you'll always come across an old fence line. And many of us have had over the years, obviously getting the uh, fencing wire caught up in our transmission, particularly around our prop shafts. Always rip it off, always put it in the back of your car. The reason why you do that is so the next traveler that comes along won't have the same plight that you've had. And also, it's a very, very, very handy tool or a handy bit of material to have in the back of your car. It's amazing what you can fix with a bit of fencing wire. This vehicle in question, I actually had the exhaust engine pipe actually fall off it. <laughs> it's just, just another day in the life of owning a series Land Rover. So what I actually did was I got the wire and I actually used it to hold the exhaust up and I also got a few strands of it, put it around the top and butted it up into the manifold and that actually worked, not too bad. Um, it was still pretty noisy, pretty noisy, but it's better than nothing. So anyway, but anyway, we'll get on with the video. Right, so I've got a bit of wire there. I've got a bit of wire here, so that'll be enough. And I'm gonna pop the bonnet. Now, what I'm going to do, obviously, is create an electromagnet. And how, do, how I actually do that is really simple. It's um, basic science 101. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this wire and I'm going to coil it around this piece of steel. And what I'm going to create is not a magnetic field in it. It's called an induced magnetic field. An induced magnetic field occurs when you put an electrical current through a piece of steel. So what I'm going to do is I'll get one end here and I'll connect it to the negative terminal of my battery and I'm just going to arc it out on the positive. Like so. Bit. Just give it another one. There we are. So that is now magnetized. Now, for those of you who this hasn't gelled with yet, every magnet is what they call polar. So there is one end of the magnet that will go to the south and there's one end of the magnet that will go to the north. And this will point to the north and the south in the Earth's magnetic field. Now the Earth's magnetic field is actually generated, or what they believe to be generated, by the Earth's core. And obviously that then permeates out to the Earth's surface. So what I need to do now is I need to get a bit of tape, a bit of fishing line, and we're going to test and see if this compass actually works. Okay, so I've put the compass together, pretty simple. 
So here we are with the piece of steel. We've got a bit of electrical tape here and I've used a bit of fishing line. Now, many of you are probably thinking, well, why would I carry fishing line in my car if I'm not traveling around the coastal regions? Well, you don't actually have to use fishing line. And to be honest, in a survival situation, it's probably the last thing you'd probably consider using. One of the things you can do is you can actually simply use the cotton that's used in the seams of your clothing. And this is one reason why it's always good not necessarily to take pure synthetic material out in the bush. Because a lot of this doesn't actually use cotton to actually mesh the parts of the material together. Anyway, that's enough of that. Anyway, we'll give this a go. We'll see how, if it works, if it doesn't work. And please remember here, we're not trying to get a compass that is so accurate that we're going to be able to take a fifth of a degree out of it. It's just to give us a rough idea of where north is and where south is. And from that, we can figure out roughly where east and west is too. Anyway, we'll give this a go. Okay, so we'll see if this compass actually works. Okay, so the rough direction it's pointing in is here, like so. Okay, so we know it's pointing that way, but which way is north, which way is south? That's the question. Now, obviously I've got a compass here, and I'll talk more about that later on, but let's say we didn't have a compass with us. What I can do, because I, where I am in Western Australia, is I'm below the Tropic of Capricorn, I can put this stick in the ground, like so. Because I'm in the Southern Hemisphere, all shadows are cast to the south. So therefore, I know here that this is in fact the Southern end. And I'll put a stick in there. and get it to go in. Now, I also know that the sun rises in the east, which is over this way, because I've been keeping track of it. So that's east. That being the case, this means that this is roughly west over here. And with that, I've got a rough idea of where I am in relation to where I am in the world. Now, the handy thing with this is, is I can then look around at the landscape and I can then ascertain where my landmarks are. Are they northeast, northwest, or are they north-south? If there's a large mountain that I want to head towards and I know there's a town nearby or it looks like there's a river system of some kind where I'm going to find water and food and all the rest, then I can use this method to get me to where I need to go. It's not accurate enough to obviously be able to take degrees of longitude and latitude, but it's enough to actually get yourself out of trouble. Now, here by using the compass, I've got to be a bit careful because in Western Australia, we've got a lot of iron in the soil. But the compass is saying probably just a little bit off. It's saying that north is roughly sitting here. So we've got a factor of probably about maybe 10 degrees off. Now this compass in question is 20 years old and compasses do slowly get out of whack so there might be a little bit of something to be said about the compass in general. But there you have it. That is how you can make a compass and it does work and it is a plausible scenario.